Hi, I'm Chrissy Williford, and I wanted to do a couple of um, video demos to go along with our pelvic floor health workshop. A bird just flew in the garage out there. Um, and so a couple of things that we talked about were, um, you know, the sort of the mechanics of your pelvic floor, how it works, what it is, um, common issues that are associated with it. But one of the most important things to me is that it works with your breathing system and oxygen is one of the two energies that your body needs to actually survive. It's oxygen and glucose. So as long as you have those two things, you're going to survive. Um, and your body's number one priority is survival. So it's very important that you have oxygen and your, how your breathing system works really affects that. And so if you watch the workshop and remember um, your pelvic floor sits down here, right? And so it's like the bottom of your torso is the best way I know how to explain it. So it sits down here and then you have your diaphragm that sits up here, up under in, in your ribs. Okay. And then you have what's called your TA, which is um, transverse abdominis. So I think about it like my two hip bones and then it's the ab muscle that runs across. Okay. So hip to hip. Um, and then you also have a uh, multifidus, which is a deep, deep, deep spinal muscle. Okay. And so those four muscles work together for um, your breathing system. Okay. And it is very dynamic, which means it moves all the time and it is moving to stabilize your body before you move externally. <laughs> so um, even before you move, those muscles are moving and trying to stabilize everything to keep you safe and to protect your center. Okay. Um, so what happens is it's a piston like system. Okay. And so it works like inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And so if you're into automotives, you understand piston systems. Um, but basically this is how it works. Okay. And so those four muscles are always moving to work to stabilize things and keep you safe in your center. We know that all movement comes from your center and from your core, and this is one of the, one of the ways that that happens. So as you inhale, your diaphragm actually sinks down, which pushes your guts down, and one of the functions of your pelvic floor is to keep your guts in place. So um, as the diaphragm pushes down, the pelvic floor is very sort of stretchy, and um, so it actually loads this way to help a uh, cushion, so to speak, your organs as they are pushed down by the diaphragm. And then your pelvic floor becomes spring loaded. And then as you exhale, the diaphragm comes back up and the pelvic floor pops back up, sort of springs back into position, pushing your guts back where they're supposed to be and working to stabilize everything. Okay. So it's a very dynamic system. It's a lot going on and sometimes it's hard to understand. And if you don't fully get it, that's totally okay. But what I do want to work on with you is learning how to know if you're breathing properly and how to help that be better. Okay. So one of the things that I want you to do is to get in front of the mirror and just take a big deep inhale and exhale and watch yourself and see how you breathe. Okay. A lot of people that I work with are neck and shoulder breathers. And so when they breathe in, it looks like this. Okay. And so people have a lot of tension up here in their traps and these neck muscles um, and just all of their shoulders and in the front, a lot of times they're neck and shoulder breathers. And so big inhale, Big exhale and watch how, watch what happens, okay? So a lot of people neck and shoulder breathe. A lot of people also breathe backwards, is what I call it. So as you inhale, everything should expand. And when you exhale, everything should contract, okay? So think of it like you gotta make room for the air and then you gotta push all the air out. Um, and so what people will do is they will inhale and everything shrinks down. And then as they exhale, everything expands. And that is a backwards way of breathing. So you're not getting oxygen optimally, and then your body is not gonna be as efficient of, as, at using it because it doesn't get it properly, okay? <laughs> so what I want you to do is breathe in, breathe out, watch what happens, okay? Do you breathe backwards? Do you neck and shoulder breathe? Are you a belly breather where you're just breathing in and out of your belly, okay? So nothing else is moving. So do just a quick assessment and see what it looks like on you. What we want is that you breathe into chest and shoulders, 
the ribs are going to expand laterally or side to side a little bit into the belly too and then as you exhale everything just kind of shrinks down one of the ways you can help yourself know is to um, put your hands on your ribs right here okay and as you inhale you should there's a big <laughs> As you inhale, you should, um, your, your ribs should go wide side to side. Okay. So watch me inhale. Okay. So I have a little bit of rising of chest and shoulders, a little bit, um, going wide. And then I'm also breathing into my belly and that's the way that you should do it too. Okay. So this cue right here, touching yourself is going to help you if you're not breathing that way, because what you're going to think is push wide. Cause I can even do it without a breath and just pushing wide with my ribs. Right. So cue yourself. Okay. This is where I need to breathe. So Okay, so if your neck and shoulders or just belly, use this cue to help yourself push wide. So practice your breathing. Um, I don't wanna say mechanic, but that's really what it is. Practice how you're breathing, okay? If you are breathing just neck and shoulders, you gotta get it down here in the bottom and start to utilize the other parts of your breathing system, okay? Um, the other thing that you can actually do too is to intentionally move your pelvic floor. And I'm going to get into a little bit about how to feel it, but we know what a Kegel is. Kegel. <laughs> we know what a Kegel is. Um, and they're good for women to do. They're also good for men to do. Okay. And so with your breath, as you breathe in and exhale, your pelvic floor should push away. Okay. As you exhale, your pelvic floor should come up like a Kegel, right? So um, the only way this is not going to be good to you, for you is if you're really tight in your pelvic floor. Um, I would focus on the pushing away. Breathe in, push away. Exhale, do not do Kegel. Okay, just focus on inhale, push away. Um, if your pelvic floor is not tight or if it's loose, like if you're postpartum or if you've had babies before, then definitely um, work on Kegels as long as it's not tight down there. So. Um, the breathing mechanic is, and you can intentionally do this, okay? So it's uh, inhale, push the pelvic floor away. So it's like you're, um, if you're a woman and you've had a baby, it's like you're pushing the baby out, okay? If you're a man, it's like, um, let's say you're trying to push, push your testes to the floor, okay? So um, then as you exhale, everything comes in, and then you're going to pull that pelvic floor up and do a Kegel. So for women, um, you know, pull your bottom up for men, pull your testicles up. Okay. And so that's how that works. And so for women who have had babies, a lot of times their pelvic floor does not sink with their breath. Okay. I don't think that is as common in men, but it's still good for men to practice doing that because we want your pelvic floor to be healthy and fit. Because if you are a heavy lifter or a power lifter, it's very important that the pelvic floor works with you and not against you. Right. So work on that thing. Okay, and then um, the other thing I want to cover in this video is activating your diaphragm. Okay, I talked about this in the workshop. This is like literally the number one thing that I do to help my clients get results when they come in and they have a pelvic floor dysfunction. Okay, um, and that's to rub on your sternum. So up here, um, you have what's your clavicle and then where your neck comes down and inserts and there's this little U kind of, you can put your finger down into it, this kind of U shape right? It's just where your bones come together. So from that, okay, where that starts, you can press right here and it's firm and press right there and it's soft. So right here where it starts, that's the beginning of your sternum or your breastbone, okay? And it comes all the way down to where your ribs split here, right here, okay? And so from here to here and it runs straight down this way, that's your breastbone or sternum. And all you're going to do is rub it. Okay. And so I you sometimes use fingers. Most of the time I do a knuckle and then I'll reinforce with my thumb and you don't want to use the knuckle because sometimes it gets tender, but use the flat part of that. Okay. And so I've got my mic right here. Um, so you'll do, I do it this way on myself. If I'm working on other, someone else, I try to get it this way and then it's not it's not terribly uncomfortable um, but depending on how on or off your diaphragm is it could be really sore so just work with them whatever you have and then we want to start from up here where that little horseshoe shape is and then rub all the way down I didn't think about this when I put my mic right there um, and then rub all the way down or use your knuckle and say like mine is sore right here 
Um, and you can actually feel wherever it's sore, kind of work on that, but lightly, just whatever you can take, because sometimes it gets really uncomfortable. And then it's sore even a little bit higher, actually. Um, and so you're just up and down, up and down, up and down, and then come all the way down here in between your boobs if you're a woman. If you're a man, you go in between your chest, okay? All the way down, all the way down. I'm a little sore right here too, okay? So up and down. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a deep inhale. Then I want you to work on activating your diaphragm. And then I want you to take another deep inhale. After you do the activation, you should be able to breathe deeper and it should feel more comfortable and you feel like you get more breath in, okay? The only time this is not a good idea for someone, and you can, it's safe for you to try it, but the only time that it, I've seen it not work with someone is um, if they've been through a lot of trauma on their body and their body's still kind of recover, recovering from that trauma, so it doesn't like to be kind of poked and prodded on. And so we have to use other techniques like patterning the breath to actually get the diaphragm to come along and play. So, um, okay, that is breathing. So I covered a lot. Um, to recap, the things that I want you to work on are number one, assess what's going on with your breath. Are you neck and shoulder breather? Are you a belly breather? Are you getting uh, rib width when you breathe in? Um, and then what's going on with your pelvic floor? Okay, pattern those breaths. Work on breathing into your uh, Upper chest and shoulder should rise a little bit. Your ribs should expand this way. Your belly should expand and your pelvic floor should push away when you inhale. And then all of that should contract and come down and in whenever you exhale. And so you're, you're working on how your breath is working, that full system. Then you're also working on what's going on with your pelvic floor, working to sync that together. Um, and it's fine to do all of this upright. I actually have my clients lie on their back to do it just because I feel like they can focus better on what's going on and we don't have to worry about posture. And so it, it's a little bit more, I don't know why, but it just seems like they can they kind of get a feel better for what's going on in their system. So um, work on sinking your pelvic floor, especially if you're a female that's had a child. Um, and then do the diaphragm activation. And so I want you to breathe before and after you do that diaphragm activation, just so that you can feel what your breath is like. Okay, so that really is just going to give you a signal that it's, it's working. Um, if you did the diaphragm activation with me today, that's fine. So tomorrow, do it again, but do the breath before and after. So it's kind of an assessment, a test and retest. Um, so you can just kind of feel and see what's going on, okay? So we talked about how you're breathing, where to breathe, work on getting your oxygen into all of your lungs, um, the inhale and the exhale, how that should work, getting your pelvic floor to sync up, and then the diaphragm activation, okay? And so if you do all of that, you should be a really good breather. And it's something that you should work on every day, okay? We need to breathe every day to live, all night long while we sleep. So breathing is something that we do that's automatic, okay? But yes, it does get dysfunctional. And yes, we can do things to help it, and you should. So work on this every day. My name is Chrissy Williford. I hope you've enjoyed this um, breathing mechanics video. Um, and if I can do anything to assist you or help you or answer questions, just reach out to me um, on Facebook. It's Chrissy Williford, um, spelled with a K, and Will I Ford, just like that sounds. And um, hopefully I'll see you there.